Well. <coughs> Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about uh, visual code evaluation. Maybe it's something everyone does, but I thought it would be nice to like highlight some aspects of it that I find interesting and like, uh, yeah, that's me. I'm Daniel. Um, first, I want to like jump approximately 100 years back to 1915 where like a couple of the Gilbreths, uh, Frank Bunker Gilbreth and his wife Lillian M. Gilbreth invented uh, what they call cyclochronographs and it's like it was a pretty cool technique because it was like the beginning of management yeah the invention of management basically and was about uh, measuring the motions of people so so when someone does a working task they thought like if we optimize this if we find the ideal way of doing this it would help a lot people wouldn't get tired so easily because like one could optimize it perfectly and like in order to scientifically figure this out they built some devices and like that's one of them it's like the one of the first chrono cyclographs that they made uh, what one sees there is like a, I don't even know what it's called in English, but the, uh, like the sound fork basically, like, like it makes one sound if you, if you hit it, and it's like tuning fork. Tuning fork. Tuning fork. Yeah, exactly. So, so like this tuning fork vibrates in the right rhythm, and through this it creates like a pattern basically. So it's like a timing mechanism. Maybe I show you first what it's good for. But so so they also invented some like variables like a fancy ring back then. It's like this ring has like a like an incandescent light bulb in there. So if you imagine like using this hammer and having a f photo camera and like having long exposure photography, you can like generate like the motion path directly by just having this long exposure thing. So it's like. So you see exactly the line, but then I thought, okay, this is maybe not enough. So if they have like the timing information in there, they could also have precisely the duration of how long it takes. So if you, for example, like have like a blink, blinking light every second, you would be able to tell, okay, this is after one second, after two seconds or something in the image. Um, so I just wanted to go through this quickly. So they started with a, with a tuning fork, it was too expensive for them. Uh, they reconfigured like a doorbell. So, so this mechanism is like from a doorbell. So this was their second iteration. Um, then they had a third with like a circular motor, basically. And like what they were doing was like simply like trying one iteration after the next and like seeing the results. So they saw that it's like, then they figured out if they start with a with a bright flash and then it decays then you can also like have the direction in there so they already had like three valuable things in there um, and then this is kind of a side note but i found it interesting like in order to illustrate it they created these wire models and so this is like a representation of the motion path as a wire model it's also like stereographic that's why you have two and the process of like creating these was they took these um, these pictures from different angles and then a little bit like in a 3D CAD software they really like someone was like taking this one perspective from the front with a stereo photography trying to bend the wire in a way that it matched from this perspective then they switched perspectives looked from the top tried to attach it like to to do it from there and did this with all the different different angles and then they had like a perspective view to check if this matches exactly or not so this was their process um, it's basically the same but more like a newer thing like I found this visualization of like a 3d printers motion path so it's someone who just put like a LED onto the printer also does long exposure photography and I think it's pretty nice because you can like A, see the line, but B, you can like, without printing any material, you can like do a real life check of, and visually check if this is working the proper way and like the way you want it. Um, now I have to, 
Ah. Switch to some video. And it's not my computer, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm sure. Um. Oh, yeah. different. Where would it be? Tap? No. Oh, how did I do that? It's just advertisement from some company. The last bit was the thing that I'm interested in, like, like this visualization of this motion path, and like, I find it really interesting how like there's like a visualization of an algorithm. It's not it's not explaining how it does it or something. You doesn't in unveil like necessarily what the inner workings are, but you're like you you see exactly that it's like far more efficient because it just goes the pathway once and it doesn't go like random and like it's not hit and miss but it's like there's some plan behind it and i think it's it's interesting how it's like presented in this way it was tracking the Roomba, is it? what was that tracking what was it tracking mm, it's like a, a company that is like it's neato i don't know they do the same like Roomba, <laughs> like they yeah. try to have like a unique selling point basically yeah. like but they say they are four times faster, so so okay. that's there. And I saw also a lot of like Roomba visualizations of like Roombas going through the room. This is like a thing that I did myself. It's like it's just like a like piezo element, one LED, um, a stone, and like long exposure photography. And like then when you like like start scratching the stone like it generates electricity this becomes like uh, translated into light and then you have like some kind of yeah offset visualization of the structure basically because like you can see that like like around the corner this edge is is kind of like creates energy here it's very very like flat so so it almost does, didn't do anything even though I went over it over and over again and like down here you also have like the thing and you see that there's like here there's like this offset of the of the piezo disc um, it's like same concept uh, it's like a microphone a color LED so so as soon as you add like the, the color dimension you can like say okay like different amplitude is a different color you go through the room with long time exposure and can try to visualize whatever in this case sound but it could also be like other things there are nice examples of like thermal uh, super cheap thermal cameras there's like a thermal flashlight which is a really cool project uh, you basically like have one thermal sensor you have like bright color LEDs and you just point it into the room for example the kitchen space or something and you just go over it like and like as soon as it detects like a hot water boiler or something it's like the color turns red so then you have like a red red spot there and because you're like shining the light on there directly it's kind of like you have this one-to-one -one relation so you don't need any like further computing or you don't need to like remember how you're moving your hand or like what the device is doing or something it's just like yeah sees from the same direction sends the ray back basically colors the thing it's like um, yeah, this is just another thing where, where like, I think we all do this probably, like, like just aiming for something and like, like trying, like in the live coding example, you'd like do something doesn't quite fit yet, you do it again, you try it again. So it's kind of, that's what I mean with like visual evaluation. So it's, so there's like this constant, like back and forth checking. This was like, uh, neon, no not neon, uh, fluorescent tubes that I uh, basically made like sp like flash the light in one direction so it's like the star shape and it goes like out like this again and it's like very 
dependent on the outside temperature and you just have to like like play a little bit with the values but then you can can create this effect and it's like so so it's also this constant feedback loop basically um, it's a little bit of switch but like uh, this was like a kiosk that that I had like as a breathing thing so it's like a like a building that basically does the same as like the Apple sleeping LED or something, but like like on a bigger scale. So this was like like this breathing kiosk in in Weimar in Germany. It was kind of interesting how it like transforms the whole space because like yeah, it kind of like really like if there's like light change over time, it has very like strong strong visual attraction kind of. Mm. So like changing color over time or like brightness over time or light intensity over time is like thing that I got interested in like uh, So this is like basically this Actually, like the the input is or the output is generated from or the input in this case from processing. It's like it's like the motion of a pendulum, and it's like when it's when it's on the outer sides. Uh, I don't even know how I mapped it in this case, but it's like I think when it's in the middle, not moving at all, that's black in this case. But then if it goes to the outside, so it gets gradually less and it's like basically attempts to to try what you can do with only like light intensity and time so now it's but you can also like so this would be kind of like a frontal perspective to the to the pendulum but you could also imagine the pendulum swinging like this and then if it's far away it's maybe dark and like if it's very close it's white so if it was like this white pendulum so this would be a different way of mapping it and it has like a different effect probably Thanks. Ah, this, this. So, I also did some like, like video tests, and there's one really amazing piece of work that's uh, Tony Conrad's *The Flicker* from 1965, where he basically just was using light and no light as uh, his medium. And so I tried to to recreate it basically. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not my computer. Um, he has this warning, epileptic warning in the in the beginning, but like after that, it's basically really just like rhythmic patterns of like like light and no light you just used like black frames and like bright white frames um, and I thought like this is one of the one of the few cases basically where the quality of the movie should improve by compressing it to the maximum because because as it's as it's film it's kind of like it has all these like artifacts in there and so on that probably shouldn't intentionally be there if you have trying to have this like like one and zero thing and this is what also got me to talk about this topic today because uh, I wrote this like bash script I don't know it's probably like a stupid way of doing it but like it's like takes separates all images of this movie puts them through image magic creates one value between 0 and 255 or something and then makes this long list and then from this list I can re recreate the, the video so the, the video on the left is like the recreated version of the of the film on the right um, and there in the beginning like it all seemed to work well but then I was like splitting them because it was like getting too big so that I only had like one minute sections or something and so I, I put them next to each other and 
that's where you like immediately see if there's like one frame off or something because like you see exactly that the flickering is not in sync and and this is something that I think is really good and maybe sometimes there are ways to translate something into such a visual thing in order to just check if the out output is correct because like yeah looks proper if you if you just look at it not in parallel but like yeah mm. so and this is a long thing there's only excerpt of it but like so I tried other stuff with the same software like two more things that I would show to you um, this is one where like Tato Art is like a like a German criminal series or something and like uh, so even though it's like like out of proportion you kind of like like instead of uh, using like gray images I now use circles so I put like all the I created these generated these circles put them in the folder so for each image it's trying to find like one with a matching with a matching value and I find personally that this is like a like really a different way of showing something like in this scene that comes now like this here this yeah there it's finding a value huh? from the right of sorry how's it finding the value Ah, it really like just takes each image. So this, for example, see, like looks what what uh, light intensity value the overall image has. So I don't know, 200, and then there's like this this one is also like 200 in total, and then then makes the match. But like here's like this this car going by, and like the second one. Here, there's this 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 sudden sudden thing in the circle, and I think it's like like in the circle, it's far more apparent that there's something like quick going by or something. Where whereas like in the in the video oneself, one wouldn't notice it. So I think it's like it also changes uh, perspective a little bit, and probably finally. Uh, of course, one can do this also in a different way. And this is like far less readable, I guess, but this is the same image again, or the same video snippet, but this time on the left, it's like other video footage that has the same values, but like it's not as apparent because the there it is kind of, but like because the shapes are very different, it's kind of like hard to to recognize it at first. But this is kind of like a like a light intensity equivalent movie. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> No, no, there's like a last slide. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you.